One, two, is this on? I'm still here because you can't do your job. Wrestling has the ability to blend talent's real lives into its storylines like no other form of scripted entertainment. I want to be the catalyst for that oh, change. Oh, save me. Really what you mean is you will only accept change if it means CM Punk is on top. You gonna punch me in the face? Or do you gotta go ask your wife permission first? Today, we're going to explore how the sport does this by highlighting those who frequently bring up real-life dramas in promos. The only reason you are WWE Champion for a year is because Triple H didn't want to work Tuesday! As we cover the top 10 pipe bomb promo cutters in wrestling. Number 10, Samoa Joe. Joe has often been as savage cutting promos as he has been in the ring, especially when his ammo on the mic is loaded with reality. Like when Joe shot on Scott Hall for no showing a pay-per-view in TNA. Scott Hall, Chico, kiss my ass. You punked out and you're a punk. Joe also took aim at Kevin Nash, which later led to a physical confrontation backstage. TNA is the man who come in here risk their lives on scaffoldings, on wires, while others show up and pad their pensions. I said, was that from Russo or was that yours? Smirked at me, he said, that was mine. So I fucking open hand smacked him and he just fucking looked at me. So I smacked him again. Some of Joe's best mic work in WWE came during his feud with Jeff Hardy, where the Samoan submission machine mocked Hardy's past addiction issues. Cause for as many times as this man has made you get up out of your seat, there are just as many times, Jeff, that you let all these people down. Well, it can be really rough this time of year. And we both know, Jeff, that eventually your demons, Jeff, they're going to come running right back and they're going to start controlling you. How's it going, Jeff? Trust that you and the family enjoyed the holidays. It's always nice to create new memories, perhaps even make up for some of the ones that you've destroyed. You can choose to have 14 of these and wake up in jail. That is if you're fortunate enough to wake up at all. Keep on talking, Jeff. Hey, 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 do me a favor. Why don't you act like this is an AA meeting and you shut your mouth while I'm sharing with the crew? Number 9, Jim Cornette. Cornette made a career out of talking fans into the building. We've also seen him take personal issues as well as his own real life opinions and express them on television. Just a couple of years ago, I left my home in Tennessee and I moved to Connecticut, which is like trading a Hawaiian vacation for a bed in a cancer ward. Will Jim Cornette come back to the ECW arena? I'd rather go skinny dipping in a septic tank of a slaughterhouse and come back to that. His famous shoot promos on Raw in 1997 were living proof. Six, one, two, three, kid. His name's Sean Mott Waltman, whatever you want to call him. As far as I'm concerned, the only reason that he's employed is because the other guys think that he's funny when he gets drunk and throws up on himself. They were in keeping with the WWF's shift towards a more realistic product at the time, and they occurred just weeks before the official start of the Attitude Era. Wrestling fans watching a wrestling program want to see wrestlers wrestle. That's, that's easy. It's not too hard to understand. Cornette spat bullets, taking aim at WCW. So they sit around all day, listening to people on the internet, and the people on the internet wouldn't know a wrist lock from a wrist watch. The NWO. Well, as far as I'm concerned, the NWO was like a bunch of guys meeting out in the backyard in a clubhouse in a tree. And on a personal note to Hulk Hogan, you are a household word, but so is garbage. And it stinks when it gets old, too. Roddy Piper. By the 10-minute mark, they were sucking wind so bad, the first three rows passed out of oxygen deprivation. Would have been funny if it wasn't so sad. Shawn Michaels. Well, Shawn Michaels is still the single most talented athlete in wrestling today inside the ring. But outside, he's an adolescent obnoxious jerk who takes his tights and goes home if he doesn't get his way. And sports columnist Phil Mucknick, who regularly badmouthed wrestling. I say go to hell, Phil Mucknick, and try to reform things down there. Because we're doing just fine up here without you. Jim was even taking jabs at Vince Russo all the way then, as Jim referred to Vince as a Yankee. Phony teeth, phony hair, and a phony tan. And running the WWF, you got a whole office building full of Yankees from New York City that wouldn't know a wrestling match if it bit them. Threatening to kill me, threatening to kill my entire family. Bart Gunn's gonna be a star now. I said, I wanna kill you! I would like to just squeeze you until your britches are full and your eyeballs pop out. Number 8, Steve Austin. The foundations of the Stone Cold character were established in ECW at the end of 1995. Here, Austin was finally given free reign to speak his mind. I've been crapped on for four years. I believe I deserve a break. I didn't get to climb a ladder to the top in WCW like this. He took aim at the politics in WCW that held him down. It's a politics.
politics in WCW kept the biggest potential superstar in wrestling on the goddamn ground. The bookers who kept him in the mid card. Yeah, take me back to WCW. Let me be a mid card wrestler. Let me just scramble around. Let me get no dues. Let me don't give me nothing. Treat me like a piece of garbage. Feed me garbage. The older wrestlers hogging the spotlight. I was never allowed to reach that mid card status in a WCW brother. And worst of all, Eric Bischoff, who had fired an injured Austin by FedEx. The circumstances dictated that I had to let him go. I didn't have any choice. He hadn't found that mark yet. A FedEx copy of your termination notice is on its way to your home in Texas. My world famous impression of the biggest piece of trash I ever laid my eyes on. Brain couldn't be here, so I had my secretary leave a message on his answer machine, and when he calls me, I'm gonna fire him on the phone just like I did Austin. Number seven, Triple H. Some of Triple H's best work is when he blurs the lines between a work and a shoot, such as his original The Game promo, where he spoke about being punished for his role in the curtain call. Madison Square Garden, I walk to the ring to say goodbye to my friends, Kevin Nash, Scott Hall, Shawn Michaels. Who got punished for that, JR? Me. As Triple H became more of a main event player, it meant more freedom to say what he wanted in his promos. If it wasn't for me, you'd be nothing. You got that? I made you, you know. Well, I can break you. Why don't you run along into the back and hang out with the other curtain jerkers while the, the main event guys stay in here and handle our business? By the time he got into power as the authority, his promos were even more ruthless. I hate to be the one to break it to you, but you never do a dime, buddy. Guys like Jericho, Edge, Rob Van Dam. If any of those guys had been the face of the WWE, We'd all be working for Ted Turner right now. Without the WWE, your pipe bomb and you really mean nothing. And regardless if you legit believe the things he said. Why, if you're a millionaire, you're evil. If you're a billionaire, you're the Antichrist. I would rather eat well than sleep well. It played into the online discourse that Hunter held others down so he could stay on top. At WrestleMania, I put an end to your dreams and I bury Daniel Bryan. I'm gonna tweet my displeasure. And, and if that doesn't work, me and my friend Mark, we're gonna stop watching. Number six, shoot promos. We'll now look at a selection of standalone work shoot promos. Dewey Foley is a three-year-old boy. You sick sons of bitches! McMahon didn't want someone like The Undertaker representing the World Wrestling Federation. So when you walked down that aisle last week, people at home, all they did was grab their remote, change the channel to the WWF, and watch Stone Cold, a person you and your old friends got fired from here. When I was out hurt, you stupid bastard, you lying coward, what did you do? You did everything you could do to get inside my girl's head and inside her pants. Yeah. You were running around backstage talking about this vanilla ice wannabe named John Cena, said he couldn't make it. Each of which saw wrestlers peel back the curtain to blur the lines between reality and fiction. WCW was nothing but a bunch of guys pushing their sons. If you didn't have a dad in the business, you couldn't even get an opportunity. I left the World Wrestling Federation for gimmicks like this. Oh, my new name is Seven, by the way, so they've dressed me up like Uncle Fester. And they can all kiss my ass. I'm told to deliberately ignore the moves and the holds during the matches so I can tell stories. Hey, let me tell you who doesn't give a shit about this company. That goddamn politician Hulk Hogan. All while bringing up behind the scenes drama we'd never normally hear about on television. Vince, you tried to bury me and you tried to kill me off, but you didn't get the job done. Bischoff is each and every one of these motherfucking smart marks. I throw a coffee on myself. As far as I'm concerned, Eric Bischoff, you can take this job and shove it up your you know what. You're an obnoxious, overbearing ass. Abuse of power. And I'm sick of all of you, my GM, sitting there criticizing me, calling me the coward. I'm the one here, day in and day out, in that wrestling ring, beating people up. Look at me, Tony. 
Look at me. I want you to fire me. You fucking mark. Fire me. Fire me. Number five, Bret Hart. Bret Hart's feud with Shawn Michaels was littered with back and forth personal jabs. This intensified their rivalry and resulted in the two sharing legit animosity towards each other. You might as well shake hands now because you're going to hate each other after that. Phony little faker, why don't you right, take right, your little pussyfoot injury no, no. I'm going and go no. back and find no. your smile. Degenerate, that's what you are. A self-professed degenerate. Shawn Michaels, you're a disgrace to professional wrestling. Instead of facing me like a man, you are too busy posing for girly magazines. Quiet By the man, way, please. I don't think it was a girly magazine. I think it was a gay magazine. I don't want nothing to do with him. I just hope I don't have to run him over with my car or something because he bothers me that much. During Brett's return to the WWF in 1996, he talked about his decision to re-sign with the company instead of joining WCW. All I can say is they made me a great offer. Well, I'll be with the WWF forever. Whoa. That I'm not somebody that's greedy for money. Uh, I'm, I'm a person that's greedy for respect. Brett also mentioned how he made a promise to his sick nephew that the hitman would return. And that little boy passed away. From that very day, I promised myself that I would come back. Canada is a country where we still take care of the sick and the old, where we still have health care. After the passing of his brother Owen, Brett openly spoke about his dilemma in retiring from the ring on his own terms. Maybe it's time for me to move on and try to accomplish something else in another field or do something else. Which is sad when you consider less than half a year later, he would wrestle a match that ultimately led to the Hitman's career ending against his will. Number 4, Shawn Michaels. Shawn Michaels fired back at Brett in some unique ways, including the infamous line that implied Brett was sleeping with Sonny. Even though lately you've had some sunny days, my friend, you still can't get the job done. In a similar vein to how Michaels got upset about being mocked by Brett for appearing in Playgirl. The sunny comment angered the hitman and later led to a physical confrontation backstage. How'd you know I was in that girly magazine? You had to flip through the pages just a little bit. Real animosity. Hitman, I seen you on the road and bro, you ain't no role model. But despite this, the bad blood kept on spewing. You couldn't go 10 minutes in any situation, if you know what I mean. Oh boy. If Brett can make a buck, he'd sell his mother. That's the truth. Now, wow. whether it be out here or back there, Bret Hart hates my guts. I'm a hell of a lot safer out here than I am back there. I'd say how happy he is to have me out here commentating, commentating on his match. You know, all the good stuff Brett always says about me. I think just reinforcing that bond, that love that we have. You thought you were burying yourself before. Bringing that idiot out here is even worse. You have convinced me that you are the dumbest son of a bitch I have ever met in my life. If I go down, I'm bringing everybody with me, and I'm going out in a blaze of glory. For you, Bret Hart, your obsession with me, it will ultimately be your destruction. Brett and Sean buried the hatchet on TV in 2010, after years of Sean continuing to throw shade at the hitman on screen. And then I ran his ass down south with the rest of those dinosaurs. Nobody would, nobody would even care in the United States. And your point would be what? I screwed you once, and I'll screw you again. You deserved what happened 12 years ago in Montreal. At that time, Sean was very opinionated and strong-willed. Triple A, wait a minute. That's, hey, what is this? you were a bad guy. I was a good guy. You were a good guy. That's, wait a minute. Number three, Paul Heyman. Heyman may be infamous for all the lies he's told behind the scenes. I always found it so much easier in life to lie. People accept lies so much easier. But so many of his promos are great because they're not based in fiction. They often cover real life matters and portray how Paul really feels. God knows the network has never put out one freaking commercial or one press release to let you know that we're here. We hate this stinking network. Hey, network, I dare you to throw me off the air. Because we all kind of know how ugly his daughters are and they kind of look just like the old man and they probably talk like this. I'm just kidding. You understand me or not? I'm, I'm just kidding. How you doing at the seesaws in Louisville, Jerry? Huh? Your own sons don't call themselves Wallace. 
Heyman is also known for his shoot style promos. The only reason you are WWE champion for a year is because Triple H didn't want to work Tuesday. Never afraid to hold back and deliver some home truths that people need to hear. In 2005, WWE had no vision for you. And what did I do? I martyred my entire career for you. Don't you realize that the mop had more personality than you? That the mop had more charisma than you? That the mop had more chemistry with Perry than you? I mean, can you honestly believe that you ever had a chance against a mop? Get lost! Take a hike! Number two, John Cena. Cena has long since been known for his ruthless personal jabs at other wrestlers. You can say you're a grown man. I just don't believe you. You're a baby. I don't know whether to spank you or breastfeed you. But there was a noticeable change in John's promos after his feud with CM Punk in 2011. And I know no matter what I do, I could, I could increase my work rate. I could add to the five moves of doom or maybe let my heel persona shine through. The PG Cena that had been seen in previous years wasn't going to work anymore. Instead, we'd see a more savage side to Cena. Every week, you show up, steal a paycheck, and you are a waste of space. You're just a guy holding on to that championship because I let you. And maybe, just maybe, if you hold on to this, you can finally walk around with the Western Superstars and say, hey guys, look, I'm finally what I was supposed to be 10 years ago. Wayne Johnson is a self-centered, egotistical, see-through son of a bitch that wouldn't give a rat's ass if this company closed its doors tomorrow. You're on your way to greatness, but I can't put you in that class because you don't belong in that class you are not broken down because if you was broken down you wouldn't be posting workout videos on your wife's instagram you're just a fake congratulations it took you five years to cut a halfway decent promo but now i'm about to shrink you down to size you're gonna try as hard as you can to make it here and if you ever fail oh no it ain't your fault it's my fault right because i buried you i also know that the fiend is bray wyatt is Husky Harris is a guy in a mask. Y'all look just like your mugshots. How was it getting arrested? And this included incorporating the real life issues of his opponents into promos. Why on earth do we continue to give fifth and sixth chances to people? All they do is say, what about me? You've had behavior problems in the ring. You've had behavior problems outside the ring. This is not your first year here, Dolph. It is your seventh. The Dolph Ziggler story goes like this. First you were a caddy, then you were a cheerleader, then you had blonde hair, then you had brown hair, now you have blonde hair, then you had a large girlfriend, now you got a small girlfriend, now you got a large man, and you walk around with a suitcase that has a contract and a bunch of Valtrex. For 300 days, you have been WWE champion. For 300 days, that championship has been irrelevant. You ain't stepped up, you fell off. All you've been showing the WWE Universe is that you got no balls, brah. You've rested on your laurels, you're a little bit comfortable, and you need to find the edge again. You know what? Stone Cold was right when he called you out on his podcast. Two bona fide WWE superstars, Seth Rollins, Roman Reigns. One guy still trying to figure it out, Dean Ambrose. You're a dude named Mike who shortened his last name on the real world, tried to bootleg The Rock's electricity to get put on the WWE. When you got here, you straight up stole Chris Jericho's personality. You stole Ric Flair's figure four leg lock. You stole Daniel Bryan's offense and his personality. You're a dude dressed up as a dude playing another dude. I blame you. I'm still here because you can't do your job. I would so much rather be bald than have them pipe in fake crowd noise for my matches because nobody cares. John showed he could go toe to toe with anyone on the mic and came out on top. I think Rock has something written on his wrist. Just like I don't need my notes for my promo on my wrist. Number one, CM Punk. Punk's promos in WWE really began to hit their stride during his feud with Jeff Hardy in 2009. Here, Punk leaned into more of a straight edge persona, while at the same time scolding Jeff for his struggles with substance abuse. I know 
you know a thing or two about prescription medication. What I don't think you realize is that you have to go to a doctor to legally obtain some. I'm gonna do what you should have done a long time ago. I'm gonna just say no. We all remember how Punk set the wrestling world alight with the original Pipe Bomb promo. But the fact that Dwayne is in the main event of WrestleMania next year and I'm not makes me sick. And in the months following where Punk continued to shoot straight, still basing the content of his promos in reality. I love the place I work. I just hate the people in charge. Things like this company inside and outside the ring are filled with a parade of shameless ass kissers. Did you tell Chris Masters, somebody who over the past year has worked his ass off to get better, did you fire him face to face or did you call him up and say, hey kid, it's a budget thing, best of luck in your future endeavors. You went from somebody who just sucked to somebody who just sucked up. I have had friends work for this company and be unceremoniously fired. They deserved it. They deserved yeah. it? They deserved it, why? Because you don't know what makes a superstar in 2011. The guy that said the legendary Eddie Guerrero was a vanilla midget. What do you know about main event talent? You gonna punch me in the face? Or do you gotta go ask your wife permission first? You know who gave up on their dream? You did, when you moved to California to become a bodybuilder and you became a sports entertainer because you couldn't hack it, all right? Certainly we've got similarities. We don't smoke, we don't drink, we don't do drugs, but you know Anymore. something? You don't wear the pants in the family, but you do wear her panties, don't you? I would, but um, I know where that hand's been. After joining AEW in 2021, Punk reflected on his horrific end to life in WWE. And I was never going to get healthy physically, mentally, spiritually, or emotionally, staying in the same place that got me sick in the first place. While also throwing jabs at the company. Go ahead, leave, main event night four of a buy one, get one free extravaganza, and then get released. But no matter the company, Punk is never far from controversy. In AEW, personal issues backstage began to unravel on television. The CM Punk who loses his fake smile the second he doesn't get what he wants. Nobody wants you here, they never wanted you here. That whole locker room's afraid to say it, not me. So get out. You talk a big game about workers' rights, yeah? Well, you've shown the exact opposite since you've gotten here. CM Punk. Fragile ego, fragile body, weak mind, weak spirit. The CM Punk who blames all of his failures on everyone else but himself. That's because I am the one true, genuine article in a business full of counterfeit bucks. Which ultimately led to Punk having to leave the promotion again, this time twice. I'm hurt and I'm old and I'm fucking tired I totally and I work with fucking children. I respect the situation. A sensational return to WWE meant mending fences. It's a little bit corny and it's a little bit cheesy and it's not going to sound like CM Punk. But I've changed. So if you're here now, if you're watching at home and you're disappointed that CM Punk walked out, I understand and hell ladies and gentlemen, I apologize. But after everything that had gone down prior, not everyone was going to welcome Punk back with open arms. Oh, Philly Phil, stay away. Stay away, you cancer. Get away from me forever. You spent 10 years slandering every single person back in that locker room. I'm not going to waste any more breath on somebody who's been gone for eight years, has done nothing but try and tear this place down. Congratulations. We're going on just over a month now and you're still here. And what better way to take advantage of potential real life concerns than to use them in storyline. Now if you enjoyed this video, be sure to check out our similar video on the top 10 greatest mic workers in wrestling. Have a great day and I'll see you next time.